Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Rob Nose, running for State Representative, District 42. Welcome, Rob. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you are running for this office. So I'm running for another uh, term in the state legislature because I believe uh, I, as a, I have a proven track record as a progressive and an activist and accomplishing things in Salem. As a gay man, a grandparent, and a trade unionist with almost two decades working with organized labor, uh, I have the experience that it takes to keep fighting for the working families in Southeast and Northeast Portland. I've dedicated my life to fighting for working people. In my first term, I was a leader in the legislature in passing statewide paid sick leave and raising our minimum wage. In the most recent 2019 session, I helped pass the most progressive family medical leave law in the United States. And I helped to pass one of the largest corporate tax increases in the history of our state in order to finally get schools better funded. In that same session, I also led the fight for public health. And the wisdom of that is bearing out, obviously, in these COVID-19 times. If I'm reelected, I'm gonna to continue to stand up for renters and work to combat our housing crisis. I'm gonna to continue to fight for a Medicare for all, single payer style, universal system of healthcare in our state. I'm ready to work to lower tuition, if not outright eliminated at our state's universities and community colleges. And finally, I'm ready to get back to fighting climate change so that we can have a Green New Deal here in Oregon. Thank you. What challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet these challenges? Well, obviously we're experiencing a deep public health crisis that's impacting everyone in our community. I'm really furious at the way the Trump administration has handled this. We should be in a lot better shape in the United States than we are. I'm very glad that our governor has been cautious and she's issued crucial guidelines through her executive orders that are working. It's important that Oregonians continue to follow them. Our hospitals are not overwhelmed because of the social distancing measures that we are employing. I'm very grateful for the work that our federal delegation did, Senator Merkley, Senator Wyden, Congressman Earl Blumenauer, to make unemployment much more readily available for folks, enhancing the benefit and making it available to all kinds of workers that historically have not benefited from unemployment benefits. But of course, we need to do more. I will be working with my colleagues to do many things uh, once we come back into session. Um, I'll be working to support, to continue to support the eviction and rent freeze that we're, we're currently living under thanks to the governor's leadership. I'll support hazard pay for frontline workers, including grocery store workers and bus drivers. I'll support a rent and mortgage freeze as well. And that's for commercial property in addition to homeowners because Southeast Portland is made up of nothing but small businesses trying to survive in these difficult times. There has to be direct support for those businesses as well as for homeowners. Mm -hmm. I support strengthening unemployment benefits for the folks that have been left out. And what I mean specifically by that is there has to be unemployment benefits for farm workers and immigrants who are not covered by the COVID-19 response at the federal level. I also support expanding the Oregon Health Plan, Oregon's Medicaid program during this COVID-19 time. Those of people who have lost health insurance um, need to have access to health care, especially during this crisis. And if anything, the COVID-19 situation has shown that we ought to have a more universal single payer style healthcare system in the United States. And Thank finally, okay. say that we can afford to have the wealthiest corporation and individuals pay for this in our state. Thank you. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? You know, I imagine when we come into session, um, it's still going to be trying to deal with the whole COVID-19 crisis. That'll be probably the first, second, and third priority. And then at some point, of course, the legislature will get around to the redistricting process. 
I am very hopeful that once that is undertaken, um, we'll have established a good bipartisan approach to dealing with the COVID-19 crisis, and we'll be able to deal with redistricting in a bipartisan manner, similar to the way that we did in the 2011 session before I served. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not, and why? Well, as I kind of mentioned in my opening statement, I think climate change is still one of the most important, if not the most important crisis facing our state and our planet right now. Um, I recently became a grandparent. Well, maybe not recently, like two years ago. Um, and I want to fight for my grandson and my kids to enjoy the quality of life in this beautiful state that my husband and I have been able to enjoy living here. I absolutely support a Green New Deal for Oregon. We have to dramatically reduce carbon emissions, fund a 21st century clean energy economy, and ensure that Oregonians who are most impacted by carbon pollution and global warming are protected. I was very frustrated that a small group of right-wing Republicans were violated their oath of office and took a taxpayer-funded paid vacation and walked off the job. I take this role very seriously, and I would not have done that. If we ever get back to being in the legislature, I, would have, I want your viewers to know that I would have supported the bill that was in the 2020 session, but we absolutely need to do more if we're going to combat this climate crisis. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? Probably one of my proudest accomplishments was working to pass the 2019 Student Success Act. I was one of the legislators that actively championed Measure 97. I worked very hard when I was on the Revenue Committee in 2017 to try to pass something which laid the groundwork for the Student Success Act that we passed in 2019. I do not support a suspension or repeal or a change to that measure. I believe it was crafted in a way to be sensitive to the economic times that we find ourselves in. That funding is gonna be vital to funding schools and making sure the social safety net that the school system provides in our community is gonna be there. Thank you, Rob. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.